You're listening to Casting Class, an engineer's guide to manufacturing aluminum castings, hosted by Batesville Products. For over 75 years, Batesville Products has been engineering, casting, machining, inspecting, and polishing aluminum castings for over 70 industries nationwide. In today's episode, we'll continue to share our experience and industry secrets. Casting Class is in session. So we have Vadim Pikovic uh, from Magnasoft, uh, who is our guest speaker today. Go ahead and get this kicked off and hand it over to you guys. Thank you. Uh, if you don't know, Vadim's a superstar. I've learned a lot already. I'm going to let him kick it off. Well, thank you for the introduction, Tim and Tim. Uh, the main intent here from my side is to provide a informative, uh, educational, and practical overview of casting process simulation technologies and benefits associated with, with using the technology in the foundry, but also uh, in the product development arena. Uh, so I'm hoping that there's casting buyers and designers out here uh, with us today who can potentially benefit from understanding and learning more about this. In the outline today, uh, we'll take a very brief casting process overview, and then we'll focus on casting design examples that provide some in- insight on how technology can benefit uh, casting process development and, and production. For most of us who visit uh, a metal casting facility, a foundry, and get a chance to observe uh, pouring of castings, as exciting as it is, what happens, uh, the most interesting part happens inside the black box. And we can appreciate the complexity of the interaction that has taken place. It's a complex interaction between the alloy, molding media, uh, proper uh, process parameters that have to be considered simultaneously. At a basic level, to nowadays, to, uh, casting simulation tools provide accurate and reliable um, uh, predictions of casting quality. But foundry engineers, management, and casting buyers and designers have recognized that casting process simulation offers more, more far-reaching benefits. Uh, among which are um, the ability to develop technical knowledge database. It's a, it's, a, it's a continuous improvement tool to optimize quality and cost, and it's the platform for communication with designers uh, of castings that can use the information to optimize performance, quality, cost, and, and weight. Over 5,000 years, metal casters persevered in, in advancing metal casting technologies by, by being patient and, and you know, learning from physical trial, trial and errors. But we would like to avoid that with, with the tools being in development now or in, in, uh, in use. We, we don't need to go through physical trial and error and experimentation. Uh, it's, it's all can be done in a virtual uh, field of experiments and process optimization. What I'd like to do here is to focus on some of the practical uh, examples of where casting process simulation has the, has the strongest impact. Every well-developed casting goes through or should go through four basic uh, development uh, stages. Uh, we first take a look at the casting design. We, under, we, we, we need to look at the casting design and understand its ca- castability in terms of its ability to, to interact with the alloy and the molding media and, and how, it, how the part would react to, uh, to its orientation in, in the mold. Once we understand the nature of the part and, and uh, what it would like to do in the, in the uh, solidification uh, stage, uh, the process engineers then spend most, a lot of their effort to determine effective right placement of feeders and or uh, chills to, to eliminate potential internal shrink porosity that, can, uh, that pro- produce problems in, in, in terms of performance of the component. Following those two steps, design of uh, effective metal delivery system is carried out and, and fine tuning of casting process parameters is, uh, is done to optimize quality, but also optimize the process parameters to find that robust process window, which is what virtual experimentation optimization allows us to do today. So does every foundry use this type of software or are you seeing it at specific foundries and, and would you recommend it being used? So I think the Dean could probably answer that better than myself, but I, I do not see all foundries using it and I don't see it being used 
consistently within the foundries that do it. I see a lot of foundries that will um, uh, pick and choose. You know, they'll say, well, this looks like something we've done before, so we don't have to go through that uh, process. But I think it's highly valuable. And um, just speaking from our, we're sitting, we, we do every single mold gets a uh, analysis like this. But Ian, what's your thoughts on that? I, in my perspective, every foundry should have this tool. And, and that, that has become a, a, a standard for a lot of, uh, of our customers who are on the design end and they are evaluating the, assessing the risk of having product failures and product recalls uh, associated with casting quality. So on the front end, they're bringing the tools into their development uh, activities on the front end to be able to capture the entire path of the casting from the design table or the workstation to the tooling engineer, to the foundry, to the final use. Um, unfortunately, it, you know, as you mentioned, not every foundry is using this for a variety of reasons, but um, you know, part of it is education, part of it is resources, and, and part of it is uh, potentially a complexity of the part. But in any case, today's economy dictates that we need to optimize our process so that we can take every penny off the floor uh, to be profitable and to provide our customers with best uh, you know, return for their investment. Concurrent engineering, um, being able to bring designers and a foundry process engineers to that, to that table initially while the part is being quoted and the economics of the process and the parties are being studied by the uh, supply chain and salespeople. And, and ultimately, the goal is to provide a, a, a common communication platform so that we, we bring the language from the foundry and bring the language that the designers speak and, and combine them all at once, one simple to understand set of results or, or solutions. And the example I'm using is a fairly simple A356 cast aluminum cast arm. It's, uh, it weighs about just over three pounds. Uh, there's a sand core inside the, uh, the hollow um, volume of the part and it's made in the permanent mold process. Once again, again, I mentioned the first step in the process to look at the castability, what's called castability or solidification characteristics. Uh, it's a solidification sequence that, that shows uh, the conversion of uh, the transition of metal from liquid to solid. And, and so how is this information is used? Well, number one, the designer, if he sees this, he can understand the, tra the, the balance between thin to thick sections and potentially can take steps in reducing some of these some of these transitions or contrast and, and uh, to be able to, to more uniformly solidify the part. The process engineer in the foundry is, is looking at the hotspots and thermal centers, trying to figure out the best way to locate feeders and size them properly so they can take care of the isolated volumes that are left in the part to draw that shrink, potential volumetric shrink that will occur in a part. Additional results, so kind of moving beyond uh, solidification analysis that's, that's been used for the next couple of decades, there's, there's tremendous amount of power in using, utilizing other results that are available, such as microstructure property predictions, so predicted shrink porosity uh, locations uh, circled, uh, specifically the, the ones that are opened up during machining and may, may present issues in terms of performance and overall quality of the part. Uh, once again, is to understand these risks um, and, and, uh, and be able to address them early in the design stage and communicate with the foundry in order to be able to set uh, acceptable and reasonable uh, quality acceptance criteria. What else can a design engineer learn from, from the interaction with the, with the foundry and you know, using that platform, that casting process simulation platform, well, uh, there, there's an opportunity to predict mechanical property, uh, microstructure and mechanical properties can be directly uh, evaluated, brought back into the design phase, a plot of predicted dend secondary dendrite arm spacing as a function of the alloy cooling uh, thermal conditions with, within the system or the mold. And uh, we know that SDAS is uh, closely related to the fatigue strength of the part. And so it's very important to be able to, in a, a safety critical components that undergo cyclic loading, be able to understand uh, the distribution of secondary dendrite arm spacing, which has been an, a, a standard in the uh, automotive industry. Uh, yield strength um, in a T, standard T6 condition. So essentially what the casting has done is uh, solidification and cooling and then a standard T6 can, uh, treatment. 
and and you you can see a variation in mechanical properties. This this serves as an illustration of the opportunity to, to understand what those differences may be. You know, bring it back into the design phase and compare them with the uh, with say finite element uh, structural analysis to understand what the what the risks may be in certain areas, whether the part is going to live through those st stresses and strains um, or not. Once again, it's, uh, it goes back to the, to the point about uh, communication with the designers and the value that the software can provide to the design community. In a traditional design process, the conventional design methods do not consider the impact of microstructure, shrink, internal shrink, and, and residual stresses on the performance, the strength and durability of the component. Techniques assume uh, homogeneous properties throughout, through, throughout the entire part, and as a result, only one data set of material, uh, material data set is used in the analysis. This is sort of the conventional way of doing things right now. With, with, with casting process simulation, uh, using these results that I just talked about previously, there is an ability to link casting process design and uh, casting design and casting process with predictive analysis in the production development stage in order to estimate, evaluate the durability and the strength of the component. And this, this has a tremendous uh, impact on, uh, you know, on being able to utilize the full potential of the material, you know, optimize the performance, optimize weight, and, and meet those ever, ever stringent lightweight requirements uh, that, are, that are being driven down the design, through the design community. And now we're gonna wear a hat of a casting process engineer in a foundry and look look through the, through his you know lenses and understand what what he can do with these tools and what type of benefits are there. So the goal is to uh, optimize the location and size of the feeder to drive that micro shrink away from from the outside machine surface once the riser is removed. And, and so optimization provides that powerful tool, a uh, powerful opportunity to look at a wider design space. In a, in a very short amount of time. Uh, we're, we're stepping through about 80 designs in, 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 here in about four, four to five hours with the objectives of uh, optimizing yield, casting yield, reducing hotspots, and then reducing the average micro porosity. We're not just considering one design or going uh, in, a, in a, a serial way of changing physically or manually changing the size of the riser. We're plugging in a large number of reasonable casting of riser designs and trying to figure out uh, which combination of the two will give us uh, lowest micro shrink with the optimal casting yield. So that's really the power of, of using this tool on a front end before the tools are cut and, and physical sampling in the foundry begins. All right, let's uh, move on to the next step. I think this is going to be a little bit more exciting because we're, we're looking at a uh, fluid flow problem. Uh, um, we're, we're filling the, the mold with uh, liquid aluminum. And again, I, I wanted to emphasize that uh, the, 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 the term here is casting process simulation. It's not just uh, solidification modeling that's, that's been thrown around in the industry or, or mold flow or flow modeling. It's, it's, it's trying to capture the entire metal casting process from bringing the metal into the mold, allowing it to solidify, and then allowing it to cool to room temperature. And so what, what you're seeing is a temperature scale. In other words, we're tracking metal temperatures throughout the system in a scale of uh, starting pouring temperature of 1375 Fahrenheit to, to the liquidus point. The liquidus point is where we see metal turning into solid. And, and so one of the challenges with design at this point, visually you see that there's a, a volume of cold metal forming up at the top of the part. And depending on the process conditions and the amount of variability, uh, this could result in metal falling below the liquidus or reaching the liquidus. Then we have a problem of uh, an issue of forming cold lamps or uh, non-fills. So it allows us to look and take a, an X-ray view into the, the metal stream and understand uh, the various eddies and, and direction in which uh, the metal flows throughout the part. Um, you know, as a final step, you see uh, differences in temperature throughout the part that will lead to differences in volumetric contraction as the part starts to cool. And depending on how the uh, the strains and stresses are are acting on the part th throughout that process, we may see some issues with part distorting uh, outside of the norm normal nominal uh, conditions or dimensions. So uh, that that is the power of the simulation technology to be able to capture 
uh, those, those thermal fields and bring that into a thermal stress analysis arena in order to be able to get a feel for how, how far off we may be with the final shape of the part and or if there are any other issues with, with the structural in integrity uh, and or residual stresses. So that's the power of some of these results to being visually, not only visually, but quantitatively describe uh, potential issues with the, with the setup and be able to then come up with the root cause analysis and remedy to solutions. So that's, that was my objective of, to demonstrate some of the practical applications of process simulation, some of the thought process and logic behind understanding what these results mean and taking maybe the next step uh, above and beyond and, and f figuring out what to do with them. What, 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 are the, what are the things we can improve in the design either of the casting or of the, in the design of the rigging system? The casting process simulation is a powerful business tool. It's to be able to optimize their process and optimize their costs and, and increase revenue. When I look at that, that tells me you're gonna, you're gonna process a heck of a lot more castings uh, with the proper gate and rise ring. I think this is a great, we show what the problem is, we show some uh, you know, some opportunity, and then here's here's the dollar and cents. Here's where the here's where the uh, rubber hits the road. And it's it's a better part and it's a cheaper part. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic uh, catch, Tim. Um, you know, not only you're you're re reducing the amount of metal, uh, the the till time is faster, and and the cleaning costs are lower too. Uh, quickly summarizing, you know the. Just, just generally speaking, effective uses of simulation, obviously, in diagnostic, looking, looking at simulating reality to look inside the black box, looking at current jobs and looking at optimizing uh, either tooling design, reducing, you know, scrap rate, improving quality. And, and those are the powerful, powerful benefits. But also predictive. We talked about bringing that into the design stage and looking at concurrent engineering. I mentioned education, education of the workforce, education of customers, uh, education of anybody who deals with castings and research and development. Those are the four arenas where we see tremendous value in using casting process simulation. You're listening to Casting Class, an engineer's guide to manufacturing aluminum castings hosted by Batesville Products. Be on the lookout for our next casting class on the first Wednesday of every month. Until then, you can find more resources like videos, written guides, and case studies on our website, BatesvilleProducts.com. That's BatesvilleProducts.com. See you next month. <laughs>